Welcome to Electra Online. To get some more familiar familiarity with the product rules of vectors, let's try to show the following. Here we have the divergence of the product of f times vector a should be equal to f times the divergence of a plus a times the gradient of f. Well, let's try and see if this indeed is the case. So we're going to start out with using on the left side f times a and so simply f times a is equal to f times each of the components of a a sub x times in the x direction plus a sub y y direction plus a sub z in the z direction so now we're going to take the divergence of that so when we take the divergence of that what do we end up with well let's see so this is going to be equal to the partial with respect to x of f times a sub x plus the partial with respect to y times f times a sub y plus the partial derivative with respect to z of a of f times a sub z. So that's all we do when we take the divergence. We simply multiply the partial derivative with respect to x with respect to y with respect to z which each of the components x, y, z of the vector that we're dealing with. Of course, we have the additional product of f times the vector components. So now we need to take the partial derivative of a product. So that means, and three times that is, of this product, this product, and this product. So now we need to use the product rule. So this is going to be equal to the first times the partial derivative with respect to x of a sub x, which is simply a sub x plus the second, which is a sub x, times the partial derivative with respect to x of f, which is the partial with respect to x of f. So now we do that again, plus, we, now we do it for here, which is the first, times the derivative of the second, again, is the partial derivative with respect to y of a sub y, which is a sub y, plus a sub y times the partial derivative with respect to y of f. And then we do it a third time, same thing, it's the first times the partial derivative with respect to z of a sub z, which is a sub z, plus the second a sub z times the partial derivative with respect to z of f. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to separate some of these ter terms. We have six terms, but three of them have f times a sub x, f times a sub y, and f times a sub z, so we can factor that out and we can factor out an f, so we can say that is equal to f times a sub x plus a sub y plus a sub z. And then we have these three terms right here, so let's write those out. So this is plus a sub x times the partial with respect to x of f plus a sub y times the partial derivative with respect to y of f plus a sub z times a partial derivative with respect to z times f. Okay, now we can see that this first portion right here is very similar to what we have over here. We have f times a sub x plus a sub y plus a sub z, and is that equal to the divergence of a? Well, let's think about that. So here, if we take the divergence of a, this is equal to the partial with respect of x times a sub x plus the partial with respect to y times a sub y plus the partial with respect to z of a sub z which would be equal to a sub x plus a sub y plus a sub z which means that the divergence of a is equal to the sum of the components of a which is what we have here and then we multiply the times f which is exactly what we have over there so the left side is equal to f times the divergence of a. If we're going to now look at the second part right here, this should equal what we have over here on the right side. So we're going to add plus this right here. Now, think about it. What does the gradient of f look like and what happens when we take the dot product of the vector a with the gradient of f? Well, let's try that. So in other words, what we're going to get is we're going to get the dot product of a times the gradient of f, which is equal to the dot product of a times, in this case that's going to be the x component times the partial with respect to x of f, plus the y component with the partial derivative with respect to y of f, 
plus the z component times the partial derivative with respect to z of f. So this is what we call the gradient of f. Then we do the dot product, which means that this is equal to a sub x in the x direction plus a sub y in the y direction plus a sub z in the z direction, uh, a sub z in the I'm missing something out here, I'm missing some things. Let me try to get a sub y in the y direction plus a sub z in the z direction. So this is going to be the a vector dotted with this right here, which is equal to the x component in times the partial derivative of x times f plus the y component times the partial derivative of y with respect to y of f plus the z component. And I'm running out of room here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this whole thing over a little bit so I don't get things confused with what I have on the right side. So let me put it right here. So I'm going to dot that with the x unit vector times the partial derivative with respect to x of f plus the y unit vector times the partial derivative with respect to y of f plus the z unit vector times the partial derivative with respect to z times f. So now we have the dot part of the vector times the gradient of f. Now, when we do that, when we multiply, we do a dot product, we multiply the x components together, plus the y components together, plus the z components together, so this should be equal to a sub x times the partial derivative with respect to x of f plus y sub, uh, a sub y times the partial derivative with respect to y of f plus a sub z times the partial derivative with respect to z of f. Now, let's take a look and see if this looks similar to what we have over here. And it looks like it's exactly the same. This trio of terms is exactly the same as this trio, which means since this is equal to this, we can replace this by this. And so we can say plus the a vector with dot product times the gradient of f. Now you can see that we end up with the exact quantity on the right side, which is therefore equal to what we started with, which is the divergence of f times the vector a. And that is how we can show that the left side equals the right side. Algebra. Well, algebra and knowing, of course, the divergence and the, uh, and the gradient and knowing how to use the rules there. But at least it's a good example to show you how to use those rules.